Thank you so much, Professor Christopher Lowe, for joining us at the GAP Summit. Uh, firstly, I'd like to ask you, what are you enjoying most about the GAP Summit so far? Oh, that's a very easy answer to that. I enjoy most of the interaction with the younger students, and these are hand-selected, as you know. They're the top people in the world, and I enjoy interacting with those. Great. Thanks mm -hmm. for the feedback. Um, you were involved with answering questions related to the, the people gap, and this concept encompasses many needs. What do you identify as the most significant current issue or need contributing to this gap as we've branded it? Well, as I pointed out at the time, I mean, leadership actually comes as number three in the wish list for industry, for graduates going into industry, and I think that is going to be one of the big issues. But increasingly, positions are now required to be interdisciplinary as well. So we're looking for people that have a reasonable feel across a range of disciplines that actually then can act in a leadership role. And leadership, as I pointed out at the time, is not just knowledge of facts, it's actually dealing with people. So you have to understand the mindset of people in order to do so. So I think, you know, in, in the future, you're going to have a limited number of people in that sort of role that can appreciate the width and depth of, of certain, and then you'll have people then work in the various sort of siloed areas in order to implement those type of policies. So you require almost two types of people, the one that can see overall, the one that can see in the depth as well. And I think, you know, that is a, going to be a real requirement in the future, but you don't need too many of the first type, <laughs> because you need more people to actually implement than you do actually to see the overview. So, based on your experience translating biotechnology from the bench to the market as an academic and key contributor to the startup of 11 companies, what do you identify as the most significant current issue or need uh, contributing to this people gap? Well, to the people gap, I mean, the, the, one of the big issues, of course, is the funding gap rather than the people gap. Mm -hmm. The people gap is finding enough people that have the passion and the capability and the talent to actually do this type of work. And when you're talking about high technology, particularly specific sectors in high technology, you require people that have some knowledge of the science and ideally all the required uh, leadership, management and entrepreneurial roles to go alongside that. And those people, believe me, are few and far between. You know, we recruit for our master's course worldwide. And actually, of the 25 students we take on, on a course out of about maybe 400 ish or so we look at, I would say probably four or five of those are truly entrepreneurial and the sort of the, have the right sort of skills. The rest are great to follow them and, and work with them. But the actual, the leaders of those, a very limited number, believe me. So you've identified a number of current gaps in needs. Do you think that by 2050, that these needs will be different or will evolve in any particular way? Um, probably, because you know the complexity of science, of course, is, is increasing with, with time as well. Uh, the people are becoming more specialised because the width of science is also increasing. And therefore, to, to get people to understand that whole width of capability you need and some degree to the depth of it as well is going to be increasingly difficult as a function of time. And by 2050, I would say that's been far more exaggerated than it is right now. So finally, what advice do you have for any up-and-coming leaders in the biotechnology sector? Uh, I thought it's easy. Just go for it. Make mistakes, go for it, you know, and, and really it's a matter of having confidence on it. And it's one of the issues we brought up on the people gap, as you know, with females, they often don't have the appropriate level of confidence in order to do this thing. And I've mentored about three or four females now that have gone on to do great things because, you know, they had the capability and the talent, but they didn't really have that, uh, not the motivation, the motivation was there, it's the, it's the confidence to, to really go for it. And I think that's the one thing I provided for them. And I would say, yeah, that's a big issue as well. So. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time.